Module 3, Lesson 7, Homework. Solve the problems using the RDW strategy. Show all of your work. So remember the RDW strategy, that's read, draw, and then write the solution. So, number one, Christine baked a pumpkin pie. She ate one-sixth of the pie. Her brother ate one-third of it and gave the leftovers to his friends. What fraction of the pie did he give to his friends? So together, they eat one-sixth plus one-third. So we need to figure out what that is, and then we're going to be able to tell how much was left over. That would be for his friends. So let's do, I'm going to draw one-sixth plus one-third. And then I need to find a common denominator for 6 and 3. So I'm going to list the multiples of 6, or at least just a few of them. And then for 3. Now, their least common multiple is 6, and so that's going to be their common denominator and what I'm going to use. So the good news is I can leave 1 sixth alone. It's already in 6. I just need to change thirds into 6, and I'm going to do that by splitting it in two equal parts. So I'll have one, two sixths. So one third is equal to two sixths and one sixth plus two sixths is three sixths. So they're going to have three sixths of the pie left over for their friends. And that's also equal to one half. So one half for friends. So we read the problem. We drew our solution right here, and then we wrote it out. Lang went to the bookstore. He spent one-third of his money on a pen and four-sevenths of it on books. What fraction of his money did he have left? So he spent one-third and four-sevenths. And we need to know what fraction he has left. So that's going to tell us how much he spent. And then if to figure out how much he has left, we need to know how much he spent first. So we'll get there. Let's draw one third plus four sevenths and find a common denominator for 3 and 7. I don't see one that matches yet. Okay, 21. Now in order to change thirds into 21st, I need to split it into sevenths. So I'll have 7 21st plus if I split the sevenths into thirds, that's how I'll get 21. So I'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 21st. And that is equal to 7 plus 12 is 19. 21st. Now that doesn't answer our question because it wants to know what fraction of his money does he have left. So if he started out with his whole money, so say it was a dollar maybe, but we're working in 21st. So he starts out with one, but really since we need to make it into a fraction, let's call it 21 21st. He spent 19 21st. So he has two 21sts left. Number three, Tiffany bought two fifths kilogram of cherries. Linda bought one tenth kilogram of cherries less than Tiffany. How many kilograms of cherries did they buy all together? So Tiffany buys two fifths of kilograms. Linda bought one-tenth kilogram less 
than Tiffany. So she bought two fifths minus one tenth. So basically two fifths minus one tenth is Linda. Tiffany is just two fifths. So let's start by figuring out how much Linda bought. So we need to find a common denominator for fifths and tenths. All right, well right away I see we can just leave tenths alone. So this is gonna stay one tenth. We just need to change two fifths into tenths. So in order to do that, five times two is equal to 10. So I'm gonna split this in half and we have one, two, three, four tenths minus one tenth equals three tenths. So Tiffany, or Linda, sorry, bought three tenths kilograms of cherries. So how many kilograms did they buy all together? So Linda bought three tenths. Tiffany bought four tenths because we've already figured out our answer there. We already changed two fifths to four tenths. So we can just do four tenths plus three tenths is equal to seven tenths kilogram is how much they bought together. Number four, Mr. Revis bought a can of paint. He used three eighths of it to paint a bookshelf. He used one fourth of it to paint a wagon. He used some of it to paint a birdhouse and has one eighth of the paint left. How much paint did he use for the birdhouse? Okay, so first let's figure out how much he used so far that we know of. So he used three eighths for the bookshelf, one fourth for the wagon. and then had one eighth left. So let's do three eighths plus one fourth. So we have three eighths plus one fourth. If I find a common denominator, it's going to be easiest to make, you'll see, we can do 4, 8 as our common denominator. So I'm going to split this into eighths. So we'll have 2 eighths. So this is 3 eighths plus 2 eighths. That's equal to 5 eighths. Now 5 eighths plus something plus the 1 eighth that was left would give us the 8 eighths, the total amount of paint. So we need to know what this is going to be. 5 eighths plus 1 eighth is 6 eighths. So 6 eighths plus what equals 8 eighths? Well, that would be 2 eighths. So he used 2 eighths for the birdhouse. But 2 eighths is equal to 1 fourth, so if we reduce that, we'd say 1 fourth for the birdhouse. Number 5. Ribbon A is 1 third meter long. It's 2 fifths meter shorter than ribbon B. What is the total length of the two ribbons? So ribbon A. is one third. Ribbon B is two fifths meter shorter, or ribbon A is one third, so ribbon B is two fifths me meter shorter than ribbon B. So ribbon B is one third plus two fifths. So let's figure out what ribbon B is before we can figure out the total length of them together. We have one third plus two fifths. 
Now we need to find a common denominator for three and five. It's gonna be 15. If I break three thirds into 15, so I'm gonna to need to break it into fifths this way. So we'll have five fifteenths plus, if I take the fifths and break it into thirds, to make fifteenths, I'll have six fifteenths, and together that is eleven fifteenths. So this is equal to eleven fifteenths, and the one third here is right there. That's equal to five fifteenths. So if we want to know the total length of the two ribbons together, we're going to do eleven fifteenths ribbon B plus five fifteenths ribbon A is 16 fifteenths. That's an improper fraction. If we change it to a mixed number, we'll have one and one fifteenth meter long together.